This is the Dog Savant Podcast with your host, Brett Endes. Hey everyone, this is the Dog Savant Podcast. I am Brett Endes, I'm your host. Today we're on episode five and we're going to talk about leash laws, off-leash dogs, how to deal with an off-leash dog if you're walking your dog on leash, um, and maybe a little bit of a rant on that subject matter as well. Um, as far as news, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, or you're new to the podcast, thank you. Um, please support, rate, review, subscribe, um, share with a friend, tell everyone. Hopefully I can get enough people here to watch this, listen to this. We can help as many dogs as possible. Um, as far as more news, I'm going to be shooting for my um, series <laughs> on Jukin Media and Facebook uh, called The Untrainables. That'll be out at the beginning of September. Uh, if this podcast is out around then, well, then you're already watching it, so we'll see. Um, anyway, leash. Uh, what makes me so passionate on this on this subject? Um, it's based upon both my experiences uh, in my own personal life, in my life working with clients, walking out in the world, you know, basically all day long for a long time here, um, and the feedback they give me from their own experiences. Um, I'm going to read you some of the leash laws, at least the ones we have here in California. So if it's not clear, I can make it clear and educate myself because I have never actually read them. But I do know there's certain obvious ones that not everybody follows. And it really creates an inconvenience because although you have a perception of what the situation looks like, the other party may have a totally different thing going on. And quite frankly, they might not want to deal with you and your dog at that particular moment of their or their dog's lives. Um, so the leash law. Um, more or less, and I'm going to read the specifics here, um, you have to have a leash if you're in public. It doesn't matter how well trained your dog is. And yes, there is definitions for sometimes a leash would mean a verbal command, which I never see that demonstrated. It's basically your dog runs up to someone else's dog or themselves or their kids, not knowing the situation, assuming that everything's fine because you said, they're friendly, he or she's friendly, and that means that now we have to deal with your dog rushing up to our dog who's usually on leash, in the case of my clients, can be struggling with a reactivity issue, and they just want to get out there and go on a nice walk and do some training to expose their dog, but they're not quite ready, and most dogs aren't ready to have a dog accost them um, and just come rushing up in that mismatch situation. It's also not respectful to an owner. It's like somebody running up to you and trying to sell you something when you're trying to you know, go on a nice stroll and enjoy your day after working, or you, you know, you might be having something on your mind or a family issue, and you just want to have a little peace and have someone maybe say, excuse me first, or ask before they engage you, not just get in your face. And that's kind of the similarity because your dog is an extension of you. How you project it onto other people, how it acts around you is an extension of yourself and your personality traits or your consideration for others. Um, I'll give an example that I went through a couple weeks ago, and um, I've gone through this so many times with my own dogs. I have Boo, and a lot of you have seen my video. Boo is my Rottweiler. He's very well socialized. He's good with other dogs. Um, he's awfully trained, and I go to a hiking trail area near my house where it is open. The time of day I go, there's no one there. I could easily have him off leash, and I don't because that's the law. It's clearly posted everywhere. Dogs have to be on a leash. Pick up after your dog. It's a whole nother subject for a podcast, but people won't do that either. But I'll tell you, it's happened enough. And recently it was, you know, uh, and this is what really where I'm getting, where I get irked about it is the response the other party gives when right off the bat, they did something and consider it wrong. And instead of remedying it, you don't have to be profusely apologetic, but they should recognize their actions and again, remedy it. They get defensive. So I had me and Bowie were walking. We were just you know, relaxing. And I deal with a lot of dogs. I'm walking all the time. I want to enjoy my time with my dog on our hike. Wasn't bothering anyone. And this dog comes running up to us. And I'm like, luckily, I have a pretty good way of deflecting the dog. I get a little Caesar Milan on them and just kind of like assert and the dog tends to back off in most cases. So it doesn't engage. And, you know, I'll grab a dog or, you know, worst case scenario, I'm going to put my foot out. I want the dog to know you're not going to do this and break our, the, the boundary here that you may be doing with other people. If your owner's not handling it, I will. And it's always going to be followed by or preceded by, 
it's friendly, always that, or it's okay, or is he friendly? It's like, well, it's too late now. And even if my dog is friendly, which he is, and he does sometimes like to play, ask me first. Take a wait and see approach. Don't just jump right in and assume that, you know, what if what if my dad just died and I was just trying to walk to deal with this to clear my mind and this is what I need to engage, the stress, my dog not liking this mismatch situation. Um, you know, so again, I think it's more, not a dog issue. These dogs are innocent. They're just doing what they do. Um, it's just people's inability to see a situation out of themselves. That's what a lot of people struggle with in the world, but they do it through their dogs and that's where I can speak out. Um, so, you know, and I said, I was like, Hey, this is an on leash dog park and your dog should be, uh, not a dog park, it's on leash park. Your dog should be on, on the leash. Your dog shouldn't run up to me like this. And, you know, you say it like that and you say, Hey, can you please put your dog on a leash? We're in training or just something. Most of the time it's not met with an, oh, I'm sorry. It's met with a like, well, you know, you shouldn't be bringing that dog here. It's like, excuse me, I'm following the law. My dog could be reactive or anything, but I have a choice to bring it into the space of another dog, but I'm not doing that because I have a right to keeping my dog under physical control. But when your dog comes into my dog space, that choice is gone. And then your dog, you're taking a risk with your own dog because you don't know if my dog's friendly or not, right? Um, but they're always defensive. They huff and puff away. I've been called an asshole. I've had clients called asshole. People get aggressive to them physically because they got called out for their, nar it's all narcissism, right? It's all just narcissism. It all comes down to narcissism. All roads lead to narcissism, like Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla say. Um, so what we have to do is um, be advocates for our dogs, be aware of what I'm not going to get to on that because um, what I did was I just kept moving and I kind of like just kept moving. Um, I'll be with clients sometimes where now we're in a real tumultuous situation. There's their stupid reactive dog that's, oh, and even retractable leashes. To me, that's no different. If your dog comes rushing up to someone with a retractable leash and their, and their dumb harness, you're to me the same thing because you did not ask before you breach my dog space or rushed up on a short leash, right? Same thing, but worse off leash because now the situation, there's no control. So I've had cases with clients where we're at the park or in the neighborhood, dog comes running up and these are people like walking in like city neighborhoods with a dog off leash like, yeah, and your dog doesn't have an issue or you know inhibition to just take off when it sees something. What if a car was coming and it ran in the street? Like they don't even, these people just don't see the big picture for both their own or other people's, you know, life. It's, it's insane. Um, and then there's the, you know, the dog we're working with is stress. We're trying to just expose this dog to dogs that are on leash with a little space so we can acclimate them and get over some of their reactivity issues. And now we have no choice and the reactivity's triggered again. This is freaking out. The other dog's now feeding into it. And it's like, hey, you know, what, what, what gives? And these people, someone's, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But like, they just will they'll do it again the next day. They'll do it again, no matter who they affect or how much you tell them. And what I think and why I want to speak out and why I have no problem speaking out is that if more people follow what I'm doing, and I have clients that are advocates for their dogs, and so you know, they have every right to be, be that, um, more of these people won't do that. You know, if you want to call it shaming, but there should be irresponsible dog owner shaming. Okay, there should be, uh, you know, off leash in a non off leash place shaming. Look, there's plenty of off leash places you can take your dog. There's dog parks, there's hiking parks, there's yards, there's play dates, there's plenty of designated places. There's special beaches here in LA that you could do that. But if your dog is in a place where you're going to encounter dogs in it where they're supposed to be on leash, chances are your dog is going to be the only one. And I'm yet to see any of these people have an impressive control of their dog with the voice on, on an off-leash command front. Um, they just don't. The dogs just keep going. They never come back, ever. These dogs just have no impulse control issue, just like their owners. Okay, so we're going to read about Los Angeles leash laws. Let me just log on here. Anything else I should say, Jordan, about the leash laws? I think you've got to kind of... Anything you've seen me deal with with clients over the years that... My, this is Jordan, my producer. Um that you've seen me like go off on people about other than what I'm talking. I'm actually talking about it quite calmly and nice today, but sometimes it's... I know it's, this is a very hot button issue for you, so... It is. I'm no, I mean, look, I, I've had in the middle of like 20 people in my group class, I've called people assholes and gotten into arguments um, because I've had dogs. Look, I've been in the park with our reactive dog boot camp, um, and we're walking with 15, 20 potentially reactive dogs, doing great, but they're on leash, walking as a pack, and... 
some guy's dog runs up to our group, like usually like a little dog, and there's like a group of dogs, anywhere from little all the way up to like 100 plus pounds, and it's like, you're, you're walking into the gladiator's ring right now. Like, do you know what you're sending your dog into the Roman Colosseum potentially? Like, don't be stupid. Like, these people just don't have the foresight. Okay, so uh, licensing, we don't care about that. That's why I do the leash law. So this is the Los Angeles... The leash law prohibits dogs from running at large on any any public street park or other public areas upon private property that other than that of the dog owner. A dog must be restrained by a substantial leash, not exceeding six feet, and be in the control of a competent person when off property. I don't know how much more clear that can make it. And there's a lot of places where they overly express that law, like where I go hiking, where it's just always posted on leash, on leash, because people may get confused. How is it confusing when you're walking in a neighborhood in suburbia or a city that your dog shouldn't be on leash? You're going to encounter people with their kids. Now, again, I'm going to go a little off off that subject. I've been attacked by dog. I've been mauled. Even when I meet a new client, I make sure, unless it's like a little puppy or you can tell the dog is so mellow, please have your dog on a leash or have him a little bit away from me at first, just so we can get to see what's going on, because I've actually been attacked by dogs, and I've learned dogs may act differently with one person and another, and I don't know if your dog's going to be friendly to me. I'm a dog trainer. I smell like dogs all the time. I give off a different vibe when I see a dog, and they, they sense that. And so, again, my daughter may not want a dog rushing up to her. Maybe she's been bit by a dog, and she has to kind of warm up. You know, it's, again, it's just this not seeing the big picture because you want to project everything on in your life onto others. Okay, let's see if there's anything. I mean, that's it. That's... uh. Animal defecation on public property or upon private property other than the owner's property is prohibited. Yeah, and I see that all day long in these neighborhoods, especially in L.A. People are so inconsiderate. They don't pick up. It's disgusting. Um, yeah, so there's just all these basics. But I think you get the point. Um, I think the takeaway for this is to realize that don't be afraid. You're not a bad person. You're not a mean anti-dog person. Because I've had people even tell me if they're dog, oh, you just don't like dogs. I'm like, no, I love dogs. That's why I'm telling you what needs to happen. Um, it's unreal because these people won't own up to it. But if more people keep pushing and pushing, even if it's shaming them, I don't give a shit. Again, bad dog owner shaming is a good thing. It makes the dogs happier and makes people more responsible so they don't affect others with their own dog things or their dog's issues or their own weird thing that they're going to act out through their pets, which is insanity to me. Um, so speak up for your dog. Tell people, put your dog on a leash. Ask nicely, but if they're not so nice in return, stick up for yourself. Stick up for your dog. Let it be known that this is not tolerated because there are laws and dogs need to feel secure and owners don't need to feel anxious when they're just trying to enjoy their time with their pet out and about. Um, okay. I think I said my piece. Um, all right. So again, please rate, review, subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, YouTube, wherever it is, and social media. Send in your questions. Um, make a video question. Send me videos of your dog's problems. We'll do it here on, on the podcast. Um, email me. Go to my website, dogtrainingla.com. And um, stay tuned. We're going to have more episodes coming soon. Thank you. Have a great day.